All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in. Um, my name is Ifaulu Ashokoju, and I'm the lead for Designers Discourse. Um, welcome, um, very much welcome you to the Designers Discourse webinar. This is the third edition. We've had two editions where we had um, people come speak to us, um, Caesar Graphics, speak to us on negative space in visual design. We also had um, Bolani Van will come speak to us on brand design. Um, and so if you missed any of those sessions, you can catch the replay on our YouTube channel. Um, just go on YouTube and search for Designers Discourse. You can catch the replay. Um, this is the third edition. And today we have no other person than um, someone who I respect so much. Um, he's, he is majorly behind the scene. Uh, most we don't know him, but he's done amazingly well, right? Um, uh, he's no other person than Mr. Olumide Ainla. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen his profile um, and his bio. If you do not do that, or if you do not see it, I think you need to go back and go and read it. Most of us don't read. Um, some people were asking me, where is the link to register? And it was right on the flyer. Some were asking me, what date is it? I'm like, is it that they did not see it? So um, I don't want to spend much, spend, uh, waste much of your time. I would um, introduce Mr. Olumide Ayala to join the session, and um, we can have him take it um, from there. So in the comment section, let me see a round of applause, clap, while we welcome Mr. Olumide Ayala to um, take over. Before I continue, I would like to say that um, Mr. Olumide Ayala, if you see print house on the participants list, you can pin it, right? So just tap on it and pin it so that your screen doesn't fluctuate between different um, participants. So it just remains on uh, Mr. Olumide Ayala. So we have a seamless um, session. Thank you very much. And I hope you learn a lot today. Um, if you have questions in the course of the session, please put them in the chat, um, chat box while I collect them. And at the right time, we would answer those questions. Pen your questions down, put it in the comment section. Mr. Arumide would come back to them at the end of um, his session. Thank you very much. Mr. Arumide, welcome. And um, you have the floor. Let me stop presenting, please. Okay, thank you, um, my brother Ife Shukuju, and thank you everyone that has come to join this uh, webinar for us to have. Okay, you can hear me now, right? 
Okay, so um, my video is still not coming up. I don't understand. Um, but not to waste our time, I think we should we can we can talk. Okay, so once again, I'm only media in there, and um, my story in the design industry to print dates back to 2002 when I had you know this uh, desktop uh, publishing you know and um, computer training thing that people do transition between secondary school and going to the university and then uh, on getting to the university I used to have opportunity to design a few things and there for fellowship, for department and all of that, but it wasn't anything serious. Now, there was, I school in Illinois, University of Illinois, there was a particular church in town that had um, this amazing um, print. Each time, each time they have um, their events or a you know the flyers are often very beautiful so i wanted to understand how is it that this guy's job always looks very beautiful like i see the print is imported from somewhere overseas and all of that and then i need to understand that it's not just about the prints it is the design that made those beautiful prints possible and then later on within my journey you know improving better as a designer and then i begin to have projects that needed to be printed on um maybe i would say a large scale because they were their marketing materials going to a wider um, set of people I had an experience where we gave a printer a job and then it came out so bad. You know, the guy left, he told us he came to print in Lagos. And then by the time the job came, he was far away from our expectation. But I rested paper prints and all of that after leaving the university. Getting to... Um, NYC, I had opportunity to do branding jobs for NCCF, so many of the CD groups and all of that. But it was majorly in fabrics because I was doing more of t-shirts and stuff like that, very few prints. Afterwards, I settled down and I said, you know, I've done so much and as of 2008, I was already doing over a um, couple of millions of Naira turnover. As a youth core member, I was serving an Ambra then, but I was running business between an Ambra and Lagos and other parts of Nigeria because people were contacting me and someone would just say, someone mentioned your name, uh, that you can do this, and then opportunities began to you know come across. So while I was collecting Alawi, I was also collecting, uh, I was also doing business by the side and I was making substantial amount of money. So by the time I came out of NYC, I made up my mind. I said, there's no point um, going to look for a job that I feel that I can grow this thing. And that was it. But like I said, the experience that I left in the university where we would design, and by the time the print comes out, it doesn't look like what we designed. You know, became a reality again. And then I needed to start to learn to understand how to design for print. Basically, you need to understand that your screen is different from print, not, not a wide margin. But the reality is that what you have on your screen, there is no guarantee that when it goes to print, that um, particularly if it has to go to the traditional means of printing, like you need to make plates, 
then they need to probably run on a um, cord. You know, the days that we, we started, majority of our jobs were run on cord. And I'm sure that some of you here probably had that experience as well. You know, you design, you make, there's this film, film we call it CTF in those days, computer to, to, to film. And then, you know, we had, we had experience where you, you need to, after designing, they need to make the film. Then from film, the, the plate will be made and then the real printing will be done. Now, majority of you probably do not even know all these things because thanks to um, development in um, print technology, a lot of presses and a lot of print shops now make use of direct imaging machine depending on the cadre of machine that they can use. So you are probably not even bothered about how your job is printed. You know, you probably just go there and say, I need 200 flyers. And maybe in one hour or two hours, they'll bring it out for you. So you're not bothered about the process that makes it happen. Now, but in the days that when we started, it was CTF. Then from CTF, I think sometimes around um, 2010, 2011, what we call CTP now became um, popular in Nigeria. You know, we have um, um, uh, um, CTP. So it's actually CTCP. There's one that is called CTP, which is computer to plate. And then the CTCP, which is computer to conventional plate. Meaning that the difference is just that the CTP process was more expensive. The CTCP is cheaper because it is still the same traditional plate that we've been using before that we still make use of now. You understand? So, that, so that's the difference. So there's CTC, there's CTC, um, CTF, which is the former process we used to make use of computer to film. After film is made, then you now have lithographer. Now, the interesting thing is that there is almost no lithographer anywhere again now. I don't know, maybe outside Nigeria, maybe um outskirts of Lagos, but almost everyone that I used to know that used to be a lithographer has left to go do something else now because the technology has taken them off the markets. Nobody is almost doing film again these days. Maybe a few people, maybe you need film to make a um, 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 meta block and then um, all of that. But for print, real print, every, almost everybody has either gone to either CTC, CTP, which is computer to plate, or CTCP, computer to conventional plate, which is the more popular um, 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 a process that is available um, today. So, in between all of that, I needed to go to several, you know, um, I was close to, I was living close to somewhere in Lagos called Abuli Ekba, for those of you that know Lagos. So, um, there is a commercial, there's a print up somewhere in Ijai. I needed to learn a little bit from that axis. And then I started going towards Shomolu to learn as well. So, basically, each of those, because I was interested so much in print, I needed to ensure that I, you know, you don't just um, um, make your plates and then just expect that someone will just print and then hope that it comes out looking pretty good, like, you know, um, you you have designed. I needed to understand, I needed to start talking to your printers. So why is it that this is not coming out looking good? Why do we have this not registering? Take, for example, um, if you have a text of about um, 12 points, um, area 12 points, let's use for example, and then my text is um, um, maybe red, and I, I'm trying to print a, a, a you know, you know, um, let's say it's a magazine, and then you have, and then you have um, um, so much um, um, text in, in red, and then you're trying to probably lay it on a background of white. Then you have issues because what forms your red is your magenta and your yellow. So you have cases where off more than often, yellow would not register with the magenta. So with time, the operators begin to understand to you pay a bond. And, and uh, this, this when you are doing tiny text like this, you don't do 
colorate on because we'll be running around with education or maybe for someone you you feel that on your screen you want that black to look very black so inside your black maybe you have 90 percent black you have 10 percent or 20 percent magenta you have yellow about 15 percent or whatever percentage and then you have cyan in it and then this is a tiny text this is probably a text inside a magazine and then they were trying to print and you now see all sorts you're not like ah, ah kilo shelle now ah bros kilo shelle now maybe it's on a black background you're expecting to see your text that you have your tiny text in white come out looking very sharp and good and then something like that but it didn't happen so i was because i was interested so much in print i was always right there at the press floor to understand and to interact with those people interacting with them helped my design number one so for those of you who um looking forward to beyond um who are looking forward to um a career in print or maybe because you're a designer you want to undo the print project yourself you don't just probably just abandon it to the printer you know in those days we don't abandon it to them because we don't want surprises now the other part is that for someone who probably is busy somewhere else i think the option would be that you find a fantastic printer and then you commit your project to them but before committing your project to them the information that I'm relating with you now has to do with your design yourself. So look at it now. You have a magazine with full column, solid background, and then you want to lay text. And then your text is maybe, let's say, 8 point or 7 point, and then it's going to be registered on solid background. Oftentimes, by the time the operator is pr printing that job, you begin to have issues with registration. The reality that you need to understand is that when you see overseas magazine and they look so beautiful, they do all sorts. Our we probably often will forget that the quality of equipment that those people are using to achieve what you see them achieving is different from the quality of equipment that we are using. Even when we are using the same equipment. The way their own equipment is being serviced and maintained is different from the way how our own equipment is being serviced and maintained. So when you consider all those issues, you will discover the reason why um, um, why our operators are even, we should even be applauding them because the truth of the matter is that with all the limitations with um, what they do, they are still um, making you know the best use of the um, the equipment, majority of them are still making the best use of the equipment available to them to do to deliver for us. So, but you see, all of those things have changed now because, like I said, majority of the prints that we do these days, oftentimes many of them go to direct imaging. So we are probably not bothered as such about um, maybe they are doing any digital separation or they are doing or they are not doing digital separation. Maybe they are doing any film or they are not doing any film. Yours is that you called one brother and say, "Oh, Egbo, I want to print this thing," and then you probably hand off your job to him, and then you come back later you know you collect your job it's looking beautiful you go away if not looking beautiful you start fighting <laughs> so you know it's it's like that but the most important thing is that in order for um, um for you to have better experience with between you and your clients particularly for designers who collect jobs from end to end meaning that you are taking care of the design and you're taking care of the print you need to have a deeper relationship with um, 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 your, your, the print, the, those who handle your prints, in the sense that it's not like as if um, um, we're saying that they are not educated and they don't know what to do, but we're saying, I'm saying that in having a relationship with them, it will save you a lot of stress. Take, for example, you're planning your margin. They, uh, um, 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 I've seen people who are, who are working on book work, for example, a book project, and then they are not putting enough margin. So you have gone to lay, let's say it's A5 size. A5 is roughly um, around um, 5.8 by, by 8.2 thereabouts. And then you have someone who is now, maybe your client is saying, ah, I don't want to spend so much money on print. Let the book, let everything enter into 100 pages. So instead of you to plan a standard of maybe let's say around a 0 0.6 or a 0 0.7 inches margin, you are now trying to work with 0 0.5 or 0 0.4. And then somewhere along the line, when they are now cutting the job, they now cut away a text. 
or they cut away part of the text, and then you are now crying that the the and the cutting man has, has messed up your, your job. Without you understanding that you were the cause of that problem because you didn't understand that there is a planning that makes it work for you to, to, to print. I'm sure for, for those of you who probably use InDesign, you probably may not have these um, issues because InDesign has a lot of these things already planned and fixed um on ground for you just need to know how to set it properly you know um, um it could even be something simple like planning a magazine knowing how well to plan that okay at this particular project we are going to spiral bind it because the issue is that a project that you are going to spiral bind for example the way you do the thing the, the that you plan the print the print of it is different from the one um, that you probably would um, Sadhu Stitch or the one that you, you will um, uh, perfect bind. So when I talk about Sadhu Stitch, Sadhu Stitch is stapler. So all those your church um, programs, uh, barrier programs in church, majority of it, wh when you see, whatever, when you see a um, staple being used to hold together a book, that is what we call Sadhu Stitching. Now, when you see that the edge is well formed, if you see an edge like this that I'm showing you, like this, properly formed, like this without anything with the spine and everything um, book, we call it perfect binding that's the process for making such a book like this we call it perfect binding and then you have um you have um, um maybe like a jota you're planning a jota for someone's wedding you know you have wire hole either wire um, you have wire hole these are the what they use in, in in doing that so you need to understand all of these things in order for you to be able to know how to to plan your project so that you, you are not left at the mercy of anybody. You are not left at the mercy of anybody. Um, maybe you now your client has said, oh, I want this thing perfect bound. And then you find out that um, your, your, your client um, um, has asked that you should be perfect bounded. But because the fact of the fact that the person who worked with you at um, in in getting the the print process or maybe digital um, the plate done did not understand that the job should be perfect bounded. Then he went to go and plan it as saddle stitching. Then you run into a big problem. So those are some of the things that you need to understand in all of this. Now all of these things that I mentioned, you probably may be writing them down. I check them up online. You can just Google what is saddle stitching, what is perfect binding, what is um, um for some of you are experienced, you would know the difference in all of these things. So, but it takes knowing, understanding, planning for you to know how to lay those jobs and ensure that you don't run into problem. So, so those are some of the things that I had to learn over the years and then ensuring what color should you use here? Why should I not use this color here? Why should I avoid this color? You know, take for example, a few days ago, I was walking across the street of um, my office and then one of these um, 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 contestants for Lagos State, um, um, the Senate, to replace the, the dead um, senator, someone who died, and there's an election coming up in Lagos State for senatorial um, posts in Lagos State next um, I mean, the National Assembly to represent Lagos East Senatorial District. And one of these guys had printed lovely posters, and then there was so much elaborate yellow, color yellow being used in these posters. Now, if you are an experienced designer, if you're an experienced person with print, you understand that in rainy season, number one, yellow is one of the colors that will first fade out of your poster. If, you have, if, if, for example, you have designed a poster and then you pasted it to the wall, by the time rain beats it two, three times, your yellow will begin to give way. If you are also designing a B-board, do you understand that it's going to stay for a very long time? You also probably would look at your color yellow because yellow is very, um, sun react fast to, 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 um, um, yellow react fast to, to sun. So you probably will find an, an empty and when they place their B boards within a few months, they have a schedule to change that thing so that it doesn't go looking, it look fading. You understand? So, so, so that's some of the things that you need to understand that why do I need to use this particular color? Why do I need to use this particular color for this design? What is the, um, what am I talking to? You understand? You know, even in design, you need to understand. Take for example, I've seen people who design flyer for, oh, in, you need to understand, okay, so you, I've seen people who design flyer for schools. And then the way they are communicating, the font that they use in that design, is like as if they are talking to children. Unfortunately, Children are not the ones that would make decisions for the school they probably want to go to. 
It is the parents that you are trying to communicate to. So you, you need to know that you don't... Why, who is your audience that you are communicating to in this instance? That's what I'm trying to say. So understanding that helps you better to, to design for the audience that you are communicating for. Are you communicating to mature a mature audience or you are communicating to a, 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 a it's a playful um, a mode? So, 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 so some of the things that over the years that as a, as a designer that became a printer that I have learned. Now, um, um, another thing, I have, I have a, a, a lot of um, questions here that people have asked that I feel that maybe we should start speaking um, questions as well so that I don't um, take so much of our time. I think we spent almost about 30 minutes now. So someone is, um, I have about um, 12 questions that was sent in from um, and the filling the form. Um, the basic guidelines, principal tips, best practices, and intricacies for of designing for print. I think some of the things I'm beginning to share with you, they are some of the basics. Knowing how to plan, you know, your margin. So you are designing an A5 flyer. When they finish printing that flyer, they must cut it. So did you plan in your planning, did you have a plan that has for margin, such that by the time they cut, they would not cut off a part of your text? So those are some of the things that you need to, to, to know. Um, um, something is very important on the text, maybe an image is very important. And then by the time the person who cuts, because you didn't plan for margin for that thing, it cuts away your job. So so, so are some of the things that you need to, 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 to know. Those are so maybe guiding principles. Um, like I've also mentioned, you know, you don't use a text of white of maybe about seven points on a solid background of black or a dark color. Because if it is a traditional means of printing, they will probably have problem on the press when they are printing. Unlike today that you have DI that would probably, you probably would not experience all those um, attics that we passed through when we started our own career in, in design and in print. Now, someone said myths and fact about printing. To be candid and honest with you, I don't think there's any myths about printing. I think that what you probably call myth is just what you don't, you don't know yet. Um, as you progress in your career as a designer and as a print designer, there are more things you begin to know. So take, for example, now, I would say before you design as well, you need to understand, are they going to, is, are you designing for screen or you are designing for another medium? Um, so here, a client has called you now, Mr. Um, uh, Mubarak, we need a um, 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 flyer for um we need flyer for um okay read one i'll come to your question i'll come there very well soon now mr mubarak we need flyer for xyz and then you probably did not ask them if they are going to print that flyer or all they would do is they would just um make use of um um and maybe you, they would just it would just be digital form alone now so when you design for digital, you probably will not even take care of any margin. Take, for example, what I said earlier. You probably will not plan for any margin. But now, you have designed for digital. They now say, ah, we want to print this thing. No. Then you probably need to go back to your design software and begin to plan that, oh, this thing should have at least 0.45% um, inches margin or 0.5 margin. So, so those are some of the things that you need to know. Then, for example, you are doing a book work. A book work, basically, all the inside of a book work, oftentimes in Nigeria, is usually black. You don't have colored prints, oftentimes in book works. Here is a sample of a book work. Everything, including all the pictures here in this particular book that I'm holding, everything is in black. So, if I am designing something like this, I would not go and be using cyan magenta yellow i know that i'll be working with solely black it could be various percentages of black i may use 70 percent here use 60 percent there use 40 percent there to form gray use um 80 percent somewhere or probably use 100 percent somewhere but because i understand that i am designing a book work it is a book that they want to go and print as a book there is no there is not going to be any picture inside that particular book because I understand that there won't be any picture inside that particular book, 
then I don't have any business working with cyan, working with magenta, or working with yellow. Everything has to be black. Your pictures, you have to convert your pictures to grayscale immediately from your designing so that nobody will go and make any mess of you. So that basically is some of the things that you probably need to know. Now, someone is asking about different aspects of print and how it works. There are so many aspects of printing. There are so many printing methods. Like I said, take for example, for paper print alone, you have offset printing, you have um, um, direct imaging prints, which is your, um, the popular printers you have in town is the uh, Konica, Minota, um, and several other ones. Those are the ones you, we, 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 we probably recognize as DI machines in Nigeria. Um, there is Xerox, um, there is Zante, and there are several other brands that probably are not popular. Um, so all those machines, so it, 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 that's, that's, that's a, 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 those, those are different process for printing just paper. In fact, we used to, uh, in, in Europe till now, they still screen prints on, on paper. So majority of their camp campaign, if you, I'm sure you probably have seen on CNN or on any of these international news sites, when they are doing their protest or something, you see big paper, whatever, and it's just a single color. They will screen print, they screen print it. You understand? They make mesh and just complete. So instead of going to go and look for where to print A2, I've seen, you know, people call, I, I want to print A2 um, poster. I just need five pieces. And then you now say, oh, okay, it's 2,800 naira. They run it with that. Ah, I can't pay 2,800 naira. But what um, Europeans do is that they will just make their mesh and they will just print it in single color. Now, the question is that if you have gone to use a, a if you don't understand the process for screen printing, and then someone says, I want A2 posters um, screen printed and then could do a design for me. You probably will just produce a design because you don't understand the process that it takes. Now, look at, for example, a T-shirt. There are various ways to print T-shirts. The traditional and the, um, the, the, um, the most known uh, process of printing T-shirts is still screen printing. What I'm wearing here was screen printed. Now, you can actually use what we call um, um, HTV. You can you can use HTV. HTV is heat transferred vinyls. You call it your yeah, popular name is um, you call it um, flock um, and uh, flex. In the days where we started, we used to call it ultra graphics. You know that have been plotted by plotters, and then you can still make this. Now this same shirt, I can decide to use polyester material to make this same shirt, and then sublimate on it. It will still give me the same thing. And I can then decide, well, okay, fine, I don't want to do that. I have money. I want to do DTG. You understand? DTG is what we call direct to garments. And that's another process. We also have um, print, what we call print and cuts. You understand? So, so there are so many processes to, to different aspects of printing. Paper has so many processes. Um, 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 T-shirts, for example, has so many processes. Um, um, uh, signages. You can. There are direct UV printers. You can print on directly UV printers that will print on on signages. You have um, for large formats. You have solvent machine. You have echo solvents. You have all sorts of machines. So there is no um, uh, saying that I will be able to cover all of the aspect of print will be difficult because there are so many things that have been print. There is, and you see, the industry has some areas that are even. Um, 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 some of the the, 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 the the things we do in the industry, they are so, um, uh, um, how do I call it now? Some of the processes involved, we have industry. So take, for example, you have packaging now, for example. Packaging is another different um, um, aspect of printing entirely that it takes being a bit of a specialist. Even though someone like us who have worked for a number of years within the print industry, we probably know majority of the process of these things, but it's a specialist job. You understand? Because there are various process to it. Like for example, during the week here in our office, we need to do some corrugated carton. When we finished, we just can print it on it. You understand? Some people would have said, oh, no, I want it this way. And then they will use other processes. So there are so many things. You can even still print on offset on paper, uh, plain paper, and then go and paste it on a corrugated carton just to make your package. So there are so many, it's, it's a wide thing. You have packaging for food. You have all sorts of things that has to do with, um, um, you have flexogrammics, you have, um, um, uh, even newspaper prints is, a, is, a, is, a, is an aspect 
of printing. So it's a big thing. So you need to just know which are the areas that are important to you that you are going into, and then that way you'll be able to, you know, um, um, uh, develop yourself for the areas that concerns you. Now, combining printing with the air and ex your existing graphic design job. Now, you see, basically what it takes is that first, I would say that for anybody who is probably a designer or you're, you're, um, you have a, 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 a Maybe you are working with a, in a in a in an agency or a company as a designer, or you are interested in print, or you are on your own. To start with printing, the first thing I will tell you is to form a relationship with printers. So start by you know finding people to give your project to, and while you are giving your project to them, begin to learn. You understand? Begin to learn. So maybe today now you brought a project. They said, Ah, this is how we do it. Now you begin to, that's how to learn. So from learning one day, you begin to ask, how do I get this done? I'm sure you meet good people who will tell you how to get things done. So that's how to combine printing with your, but the first thing is that just double in and one, you know, um, in our own days, there are so many of what we call, I uh, want to jewa. you understand? You know, because someone will probably take a job and in trying to maybe get it done, they, never, they probably would, you know, do, um, um, won't do it well, or probably something would mess up and then client will reject your job and all of that. So basically, if you're going to do um, prints, find printers, start relationship with them, particularly successful printers, particularly those who you, you, you can see that they are possibly um, doing um, well for themselves. I'm sure that some of them will be nice enough to show you the way. Now, application of colors in graphic and um, um, uh, application of colors in graphic design and printing. Uh, um, um, color application, um, you see, the truth of the matter is that so many of the things, because your screen is RGB based, majority of print processes, which I'm not saying all, majority of print processes are oftentimes CYMK based. So there are things that you would do on your screen that will look beautiful. There is a purple shade that I'm looking at now that is representing a um, uh, Riwana here. And then there's another lilac that is representing Tolua Abati here that is looking beautiful on the screen. But when that particular color goes to offset printing and they try to replicate it in CYMK, it can become a problem. And I'm not just saying a problem, it can become a big problem, particularly when it is a large. You understand? So oftentimes for such color, what we do is what we call spotting. We spot it. So we would make a separate plate entirely for that kind of a color. And then we will now mix the ink. So we we'll make so when you probably have printed your cyan, magenta, uh, black, you now you know, print that particular color. That is why sometimes you get some presses, you hear that they have a five color machine, or they have a six color machine, or they have a seven color machine. Overseas, there are 10 color machines, which in some instances, maybe they are, those machines are being used by some specific companies. You see some companies, since the day they have been printing their purple, that purple must not change. They are likely not going to change their printer for anything. They won't, well, even if you go and buy the best of equipment tomorrow, they won't just switch over to you. Because there is someone who already knows that shade of purple and knows how to achieve that shade of purple. And, you know, so, so, so those are some of the things that when it comes to colors and then um, applications, you need to just understand that, number one, your screen is different from the reality on paper, particularly when you're going to offset. Even for direct imaging machine, uh, it's not every time that you would achieve the exact color. Let me be and honest with you. Um, particularly, the very specific machine, hey, and get to the same brand of that machine somewhere else, I may not achieve it. Due to, due, and this sometimes is due to probably situations around 
um, um, the, the state of that particular press or the state of that particular printing equipment. Maybe the developer is already aging. Maybe the, there is no enough um, toner in the in the um, ink um, whatever. So you have various issues that can make um, your colors look different from one point to the other. But as much as possible, I think that if you are privileged to, to have information, prior information from your clients, that this design that you are doing, they are going to print it. One of the things that you should do, and I feel that you should, is to ask, hello, sir, hello, ma, how are you going to print this job? Is it going to be direct imaging? Is it going to be offset print? So that I can know how to manage expectations. You see, there are some beautiful pictures that you would have worked on in Photoshop. They look so beautiful. But in reality, by the time you take it to offset print and they do all sorts of things, by from plates to get into the machine to work. The, the funny thing is that they may actually be trying to get one particular color. And in trying to get a particular color, they will sacrifice another one that is important to you. So it's not like I see maybe the operators or the press are wicked set of people, but these are just some of the limitations of printing. And you need to understand that. So let's go to the next question. New technologies and the future of the printing industries. Okay, so almost every day there are new technologies developed in every sector that we possibly know of. And the future of print is that print would continue to be better and better. As I'm talking to you this week, there are new machines, there are new equipment being announced. There are new productions of equipment in um, um, that probably would have been, that was meant to probably be, be showcased at um, 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 exhibitions around the world. First power was meant to hold, it couldn't hold. And they sign graphics, they sign Africa. There are all sorts of exhibitions across the globe that used to, you know, every four, four years that people would come to showcase their latest equipment that was meant to hold this year because of the COVID-19, you couldn't hold. So, so many of them in the next, maybe next year or upper year, you begin to see all sorts of equipment being deployed. So, um, and every time you have people who are trying to conquer the limitation of yesterday technology. But the, the thing about it is that in Nigeria, we are not early adopters of technology because the truth of the matter is that our economy, our finances cannot uh, back up such things. They can't, you know, um, uh, investing millions of naira in people. No, you are, you are running away from bank that is asking you for collateral. So there are new equipment coming in every day, every time. It's just that our adoption rate is, is still, um, usually the, what you have with environments like ours is the adoption rate. We are careful. We want that technology to have been tested. We don't want to sink our money in something that would not work. So every time the future, the future of print is beautiful and bright, I can say that for you. Print will continue to get better and better. People will buy new equipment. People will upgrade. People who are not, um, you know, a new generation of people like myself, young people like myself, are coming into the industry, will replace the old um, um, ants, and then would we'll be able to offer, you know, new technologies and better equipment. Now, so someone is asking, making creatives and design that um, print ready. That is a very serious question. And to be very candid with you, I'm not sure it's something that we can, you know, tackle in, a, in, a, in an online webinar like this that I'm talking to you. Because this thing is more like a face-to-face -face thing that we should do. You should, you know, uh, we would have, probably have um, 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 files to files to, to, to work with to, to see that how do I make this thing. Now, this, someone is asking again, what's the difference between bleeds and the margin? Now, your margin and bleed are almost the same language. It's just that in planning, you are saying that to this point, you can cut when you say bleed. So from the end of so let's 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 do it. Let's so I'm sure that some of you who are watching the video can see can see this. So now see from this place, from the end of this sheet of paper in my hand. Now down to if imagine if there is an image at this point. Please can I have a marker? Okay, so 
So imagine if there's an image at this point now. And I don't, after I've printed, there is still white space here. Do you understand? Now, the, there is a, 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 a bleeding point is that if, for example, there is an image on me of a woman here, I don't want a white space here. There is still a tolerance. You must give me a tolerance for whoever is probably going to court to say that this is where you should cut to on that image. That is what you call bleed. Do you understand? So if there is a solid green, green that comes to the edge of this paper, or there is a solid green and uh, blue that comes to the edge of this paper, you will still have to plan for a point where whoever is going to cut that paper to shape can cut to. Now, when you talk about margin, I was trying to explain margin to you the other time. For example, someone who is doing a book work. So let me use this book as an example. Now, there is a distance between where this last text hangs here and where the end of the paper is. I hope you understand me. You can see that this, this plain cream paper, I'm bringing it closer to the screen so that you can see it very well. There is a place where this hangs. Now, this end, there is also a place. Now, if you come here, at the top where you have this image here, there's a location to which I can cut. That is your bleed. Now, your margin, that one is consistent. You can see to the side, to this side, even if I move to the next um, um, page, that consistency will always be there. Whether it is 0 0.4, 0 0.3, or whatever, the, nobody can cut into that place. I've planned it into my job as a free area. Do you understand now? So that's, um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not, I'm not sure if um, this um, online thing can take care of what, all of these things that you need to understand, but I'm sure that if you probably Google a few things online, you would see it. There is always where they write the bleed margin. There's always where the, um, um, it's, they, are, they are synonymous terms actually, but one will give you to say that you can cut to this extent in this place. Do you understand? The other one is guidance to say that across this material, we have planned a 0 0.65 as margin for left and right. And on top, we have planned a 0 0.7. That's our margin. Do you understand? Now, it is possible that an image overshoots out. We now have what we call bleed to say that you can cut to this point. You should not go more than. You see, the, the word margin and uh, bleed can actually be, um, in usage, can actually be exchanged for one another. Now, someone asked that difference between print and screen design. I think I've explained that already. Your screen design is RGB based. Your phone, your TV, your laptop, it is RGB. Your um, print, oftentimes, most times, is CYMK. Those are the differences between them. Uh, there are prints, you know, okay, take for example, in our office, we have one of the print process that we have in our office is called sublimation printing. We have two sublimation printers. One is CYMK based. Another one is RGB based. So if we are exporting a job to be printed on the CYMK Google uh, printer, we will export it as CYMK. But if we are exporting a job to be printed on the RGB sublimation printer, we would export that job as RGB because that is what helps us to ensure consistency in color reproduction. Don't forget that the most important thing in all of these things that we are saying is that you want your color reproduction to be as close as much as possible to your screen. The other part for you as a designer also is that I've seen people, you know, all sorts of screens around. Um, for designers, you, are care you, you need to be careful as much as possible to ensure that you have at least a good screen to look at. Because it, <coughs> it helps your perception of color. I don't know if you understand that. As a designer, you need to ensure that your screen is as good as, as, you, as you can get. I wouldn't say buy the best of screens. Because the truth of the matter is that even a best of screen can give you an illumination that is not real, an, an illusion rather of your design. So a design is, is dark, but because a design is dark, but because 
in your screen is is is, uh, is bright you understand so you are seeing that thing as being bright but in reality that color is dark but because your this, your your screen is is bright is looking to you as being bright so you need to ensure that maybe what you need to do is that do a couple of designs then go to the the closest printer that prints for you and just ask them to just print it at least you can then take those things maybe on a di machine you can take them back home and then begin to look at it does my screen look like my paper so if for example you are in Oweri and there's a place in Oweri called um okay no let's use Oka for example now i know a bit of anambra state and there's a place called um uh, unizik uh, or permanent site or wherever it is now i've forgotten so many of those places anyway you have a particular printer that you use one of the things you should do actually is that do a couple of designs you understand go and print it I get that printer to so begin to see if i give mr chukuma to print this project for me you already know what the yellow of mr chukuma's printer used to form so if you need to adjust your own yellow you will know you adjust it. If Mr. Chukuma's purple used to look like blue eh, when it is printed, you now go back to your screen because that's one of the things that I've seen oftentimes in print. You see someone whose color is purple. By the time it's printed, it begins to look like blue. So you have all sorts of issues like that. So that's, those are some of the things that you can do to help you. So if um, um, you can use that to standardize your own process. When we started, I remember, in those days when we were buying a desktop um, um, uh, computer, there used to be softwares that used to do calibration. So you buy special cards, LAN card and um, video card for your for your monitor, and there is calibration. So you, if you, I'm sure that still now in Nigeria, if you go to the big presses, you will still find them using some special monitors. Those monitors, when they want to get output a job, I mean, when they want to send a job from um, from your um, file to the print uh, process to making your plate and all of that, they have some dedicated monitors that that's where you go to plan your job. That is the monitor that gives them the the value that is as close as possible to what the print of their machine will bring out. So those are some of the things we used to do in those days. Uh, monitor calibration, but I don't think is any all those ones are not um, uh, popular any longer. How printing is necessary and important in graphic design. You see, the truth of the matter is that uh, there may be a graphic designer that has nothing to do with print. It is to answer what medium are you designing for. There are people who are designing for TV. There are people who are designing for web. There are people who all their design is just digital. They have known already that, okay, so for example, now, if I work in a TV station as a designer, majority of the things that I would design would never be printed. Be would be would go on, on, on the TV. It's only maybe when a company has a job that they want to do, you know, that um, um, maybe end of the year party want to now do a brochure or something, that they probably will need my job as a designer that works in the TV station to be printed. So what is important for you is that as a designer, you need to know what is your need. So you work in an environment where they will never print. You don't have to bother your head about printing. What is important to you is that ensure that you know, you continue to work in your hard GB space, whether you are using um, uh, Adobe um, Photoshop or you are doing, um, or you are working with um, any of the other softwares, whether Corel Draw or um, any of the other ones available. So, someone, for example, designing in Figma already knows that he's working for web, so he probably would not bother himself. He's working with like hexa hexadecimal figures or hard GB values. He's not working with Sigma MK. So you probably will not have to worry your head. So it, what is important in all of this is which area of um, 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 design industry do you find yourself and how is your job being outfitted? Once you know what your job will be used for, then you know what to design. Now, the design, the business of print design and how to handle print projects, that's, a, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a talk that we can finish in a day. Uh, it's a it's an all learning thing. See, after spending twelve years, I was with my mentor sometimes last week, and there's a project we needed to do together, and he was showing me the the plan. He actually had done the planning. He did not want to. Sh he, he didn't want to show me. 
He now said, Only we didn't know Jerry, I've been teaching you too many things. But the truth of the matter is that is that it's not any big deal, but the way he had planned it, he has reduced the the the, the dullest person cannot commit error how he has planned the job. Do you understand? So now it didn't take him. My mentor is about 55 years. He has been in print for almost a, over 30 years of his life. Do you understand? So these things you learn as you go. You learn as you go. You learn as you go. So there is no single um, um, thing that I can teach you at the spot about print design. Do I want to teach you about costing? If I want to teach you about costing, I need to understand who are your clients. You can't use, I can't use the way I would probably price a project um, to, to determine how you price a project. Take for example, I'm a family man. You may just be a young man who is just trying to survive. If the project is worth maybe a millionaire to me, it may probably just be two or fifty thousand dollars to you, and you still get the job done, and you'll be happy that you have done a good job. You understand? But because I am a family man, my responsibilities and lifestyle are different. That thing may not worth anything to me. In fact, if they call me and say, "Come and take this job," I'm just saying, "I'm not. I'm not interested. I don't know." That's what I will tell you. So it's not a one way. There is no um, um, answer straightforward to it. Um, okay, so. Um, Sally Ayobami is asking a question. He said, I only use Adobe software, but when I want to work with local printers, they are telling me that I know I must know color draw. Is it that there is no printer that can print in PSDI and the likes of format of Adobe, or is it most the documents of? Now, so I'm sorry, um, I don't know where you're based, but if you're in Lagos, um, you probably may come to your office, whatever your file is. You see, there are circumstances where you probably need to work with um um vectors i think the mistake that they are making is that they are confusing it together i work both in ai i work in photoshop and i work in coral draw do you understand and there is none of these things that i cannot print so i think that the popularity of some of these printers who are saying it is only coral is because that is the environment they are used to so you can't entirely fault them that is what they understand so it is now left for you to probably look for printers who understand your um your your software you know the software you make use of or for you to now begin to go and learn the software that will make um um, um your printers be able to work for you so you see it's a, it's like a marriage and if you're, you're you are speaking Igbo and your wife is Awusa she does not understand Igbo and the two of you are not willing to learn English I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You're, you are an Igbo man. You all, all you understand and you know how to speak is Igbo. Wife is Awusa, and you don't know how the relationship wants to work because you must communicate. So in this instance, between you and your printers, Coral Draw is the communication language that you understand. So it is left, and if your printers are not willing to go and learn um, uh, Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, do you understand? You must be willing to go and learn Corel Draw. Otherwise, you guys will not be able to work together. I hope that is a very simple, straightforward illustration. It's either your local printers go ahead and learn Photoshop and AI, or you as an individual, you go and learn Corel Draw. Or you look entirely for printers who can undo AI and Photoshop. That is the only way around that problem. It's not like I said, there are no printers who do not, uh, who, who, uh, we work in all various application modes. Thank you very much. So what's the next question? Two kits for efficiency and outstanding delivery of print design projects. You see, print is more about the planning. The first thing in print, it is about the planning. If you see, if you you plan a design project very well from inception, your I can tell you that about fifty to sixty percent of your headache is solved even before you start printing, even before you start designing. So take for example, planning means that I want to design a yearbook of two hundred and fifty pages. For example, can my client afford? us printing in full color can the client um, 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 afford printing 
in um, um, in with DI. Can the clients afford printing on Komori? Is it caught that they want? So that you don't go and start designing what the client cannot afford to pay for in print. You don't design 200 pages when they are looking for just 100 pages. So the first question is plan. Understand this project is a book work. All the inner sheets are meant to be single color, for example. Or I will have some insertions or full colored at some strategic point. So, for example, maybe your insertion is going to come at between page 16 and 17. So, you need to know that it is coming at the end of page 16 and not in between 14 and 15 because if, for example, they are to do sewing for that job, there is no way they will be able to sew a single sheet of paper in between 16 pages. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, if you are to fold, what we call we call we call it folding. If, for example, you're doing a book work now, you have done it on you have printed on A2, they will fold, and the, the final size is going to be like A5. They need to fold into eight. So you have folding one like this, okay, and then you have another fold like this. Now, if you are meant to have what we call insertion, maybe a colored page, the, the client has said, Oh, I want a page to show my my grandfather my my family and i want the full color to come and then you now go and plan it inside and uh, between page um so this is page one page two page three page four then you now go and plan it in between page two and three you make a very big error because it is not possible there is no way they want to make insertion in between there except if you are ready to print the entire side as a full color job for that particular area so efficiency and delivery of outstanding uh, design projects is more of understanding and planning what exactly are we doing and then you can plan properly so that is that is it so can we have more questions and um, read one and day you can just check um, uh, print house nigeria out on google our address is there number seven so queer street uh, Bagada, Lagos. So that's our address. So I'm ready to welcome more people to to take uh, more questions. We can now begin to have questions. I think I've taken almost all the questions that were sent before this session started. Thank you very much. Wow, guys, I'm sure you've had you had so much so much knowledge shared, and honestly, Mister. Um, for want of time, just try to rush, 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 so you can touch at least most of the areas that you probably would need, um, 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 what do you call it, clarification on. So if, if, you, if, you, if you learnt one or two things, let me know in the comment section. Just let me know that you learnt one or two things. Um, at this point, I'll be asking Mr. Olumde some questions, um, which you'll be responding to. Um, so you made mention, and I know you've spoken extensively on the need for designers to understand the the importance of margins. Yeah. Whether you are designing for a flyer, designing a book work, designing whatever, what whatever you are designing, as long as it is going to go through the cutting machine, right? You need to give room for margin. And I tell people that I teach, like upcoming designers and young designers, that whether or not you are designing for screen or, or for print, margins should be part of your process of design. You open Corel Draw, you open Photoshop, you open Illustrator. Before you begin putting content together, the first thing you should do is create your margin. Whether you are designing for print or for screen, and what irritates me the most is because, fine, someone says I'm designing for screen, I'm not designing for print. But when he posts his creative on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and all that, you find out that texts are already touching the edge of the screen, which shouldn't be. So, because they do not understand that there should be ample margin. Imagine, and I tell people, imagine you are, you are, you are an architect, 
right? You want to build a house. You don't say because you bought one plot of land, you have to use everything on that land. You must start, your building must start at the edge of the, of the plot that you bought. There must be what they call setbacks. Yeah. You read, so Absolutely. you have setbacks standard. You can even increase it for want of space to say, okay, I want to be able to park two cars here. I want to be able to walk into my compound. I want to be able to walk into my room, right? Into my apartment. There must be room by, 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 by importance. There must be room allocated for you to walk through. In your houses, where you arrange your seats, there, there is space. You can't put the chair very close to the wall and you want to pass through a path that should lead you to the room or kitchen. You must give ample space. So in design, margin, whether you're designing for screen or designing for print, always ensure that you create ample margin. That will save you stress or that will eliminate that error of, okay, when, when you send your work to print, if the cutter goes through it, you're almost sure that it's safe. Yeah. Anything outside the margin is known as unsafe area. But if it's within the margin, you're almost sure that it is safe. Um, so, and I think he has addressed that. Um, there's a question I wanted to ask you when someone talked about the business of print, yes, okay. right? And how to handle print projects. Okay. Is it okay? Fine. I'm sure most people here are not clients, they are designers, right? So they want to engage clients. Okay. Is it okay to times three or times two the exact fee or the exact cost that we take to produce a particular project? Okay. okay. In the event that there might be errors or in the event that um, the printer that you engaged or whatever it is, there might be errors. And you can't go and tell the client that, see, what you paid for, we found an error, or the person that printed, the color did not come out well. Uh, can you pay another sum of money to rerun your work? Or we can look for another printer, right? Mm -hmm. No client wants to hear that. So I think it's, a, it's safe to multiply or maybe increase the cost by maybe times two or by a, a percentage that you know that, okay, well, in the end, if there is an error, or if there's a problem, you have enough money to be able to address that problem. Maybe I'll let you um, take that. Okay, so thank you very much. That's a very beautiful question that you just asked there. Thank you very much. So, okay, so when, one of the things I, I, um, I was privileged to learn early enough in my career as well is the area of costing. Now, so basically, costing entails knowing the cost from Item one to I mean, item A to item Z of producing a job. After you have now calculated everything together, we still have what we call miscellaneous. So let's say, for example, you did not plan that it was going to rain today. Now it has rained in Lagos today. You cannot jump um, a damper from your house down to this again. It means that you need to pick Uber or boats or um, which other services in town now to move from wherever it is that you have to the next point. You have to pick up the item from the, the, the printing company that is working for you or probably to deliver it to your clients. Maybe you want to do personal delivery. Now, so you need to have the entire cost. Then what you call miscellaneous, miscellaneous is to say that, okay, fine. So all for circumstances. You know, and then you will now plan your profits. Now, you see, when it comes to prints, your profit is left to you. You are the one who will determine that, okay, I'm going to do a project for the next three months, and I will not be probably doing another project. This is how much I, I paid for rent. This is how much I paid for internet. This is the cost of financing my children's education. This is the job that I do. It is now you that will determine whatever your margin is. So whether you want to take 10% as your margin, or you want to take 200% as your margin, the most important is that you are able to negotiate with your customer, and your customer is willing to pay the price. So it also means that you need to look at who you are selling to. So if, for example, um, I stay in, if, if, for example, if I stay in Ikorudu, I've already know that 
most likely, someone in Korodu may not want to pay 10,000 naira for a business card. So I probably need to go and sell that business card in Lekki, where they won't mind. They will, in Korodu, someone will say, ah, is it not there? I'll go to K2 now, or my, my 12, and I will get it done myself. Maybe I will spend 3,000 naira, and then maybe I will waste a day. But the person in Lekki is saying that, why do I want to go to Yaba, or go to Iketu, or go to Shomoni, or go to Mushin, to go and spend a day? Do you understand? So, business is like you go to... I, I don't know if you have ever asked your doctor before. You went to a private hospital, and then you're asking doctor, doctor, how is it that you used to price us for taking drugs and uh, injection? No! They just write their bills. And you have to what? You're expected to pay if you want to take treatment. So that's the same way with almost every other business. You need to look at it from that perspective. This is something you're doing. This is a job that will pay your pension. This is the job that will pay for your vacation. Your pension, your vacation, your retirement. Because this is one of the mistakes that a lot of us as entrepreneurs around this area make in Nigeria. Most of you, if I ask now, you probably have no pension plan. Most, if I ask, you have no vacation plan. So in the last one or two, three, four, five years that you have been doing business, you have not even traveled out of Lagos to say that I want to go to Abe Okuta and go and look at Oluwa Rock and sleep in, uh, what's the best hotel in uh, Abe Okuta and sleep for one night. You understand? So, so are some of the things that you need to use in costing. And you see the costing, the way you costing. <laughs> Don't just say anything. You could reply to not even pay five k for business card. <laughs> no, but, but uh, yeah. So, so but where, where I'm going to is that you see, it is your costing model that you will use to even design your own lifestyle as a person. So, if you want to ensure that you have a retirement plan, if you want to ensure that you have Medicare and, and HMO, you want to be able to pay for HMO, you want to be able to pay for your staff. You want to be able to, when your wife gives birth, you don't want to be calling clients, they are, uh, good afternoon, sir. My wife gave birth to um, XYZ. You know, you know, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't call anybody to be able to do that. Do you understand? You know? So, you, because, you can't, because you can't call anybody to do all sorts of, all sorts of those things. Your lifestyle, your, your bills, your electricity, your vehicle maintenance is based on your business. So your business is beyond, oh, I spent three naira to make this thing. And because I spent three naira to make it, I must sell it at six naira. Selling it at six naira may not pay you. It may be possible that it's better for you to sell it at nine naira. Because you understand that if this job, if the client is just the job, you probably need to produce again. And it will cost you maybe another three naira to produce. And you still have to declare profits. So, oftentimes, what determines how we, um, we, we price some products is usually the, the difficulty and the intricacies of achieving that thing. So, if, for example, it will cost us so many, like, you know, you're designing for um, magazine. I won't charge, the way I design for magazine, I won't charge it the same way I would design a flyer. Because I can sit down and finish a flyer within one half. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I'm to do um, a brand design, for example, I'm to create logo and brand and all of that for a client, it probably will take me three fully dedicated days. In fact, oftentimes, if you ask me and I need to design a logo personally and not giving it to any staff in the office, I probably need a day or two to think. Think alone. Now, that should be one of the things that clients should be paying you for, for everyone's sake. So those are some of the things that determine all of this. So it's not, there's no fast or hard way to hit. Someone who is living in Ikoyi or living in Lekki can never charge like someone who is living in Ikorodu because their lifestyle is different. Their business model is different. Their income model is different. So um, it's up to you to determine how you charge for all of these things. It's up to you to know what it takes you to produce and what profit you want to make. So yeah. That's it. Thank you very much for that. I'm sure um, that, that answered um, that question. Uh, the other question, I'm, I'm, the other thing I want to talk about, um, 
in terms of I understand that in Nigeria there's really no body or association that regulates designers. But I believe that there's one for printers. Yeah. What are they doing in terms of um, ensuring that these printers or people who come into that space, mm -hmm. they are educated in the right way, okay. right? In the sense that, so because what I want to talk about is in the instance you, you have you have people who are who are artisans, let me use that word, yeah. right? They just feel you can go. Your client will not complain. Use it like that, right? How how can designers um, enforce the standard. the standard that they want to achieve? How can they ensure that whatever, fine, the designer understands margin, understands bleed, understands, okay, the colors are meant to use, I should output in CMYK, I should do what I need to do, right? Yet some printers still mess the job up, right? I don't want to say maybe that is a printer. Obviously, the skill set, the experience also has a role to play. How can designers ensure that they 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 get the best of printers and value for 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 that? You see, the, the truth around that area that I need to be very candid and honest with you with is that um, Nigeria is not that of a regulated environment where you have you will have the opportunity to enforce and either a refund of your money. So mm -hmm. someone has now messed up your job. So as a designer, you have now given a job to a print company or to a so-called printer. Yeah. And has now messed up your job. Our environment is not regulated. I need to be frank and honest with you that people will get compensation. Mm. But one of the things that we have done differently as young people is to say that when you come to us, you are buying with an 100% guarantee. Mm. If for any reason we fall short of giving you quality, we will either reproduce at no cost whatsoever to you, or we will refund your money. So, I think that a couple of people are now beginning to see that as well, mm. and they are beginning to adopt. Gradually. It will take a while. Mm. But to be kind with you in the traditional Nigerian space for painting, whether it is in Lagos or Abuja or once a painter messes up your job, he you probably would not take any responsibility. Mm. It's our environment. And a builder has built a house for you, your house collapsed, he will not come and buy you block and cement to make it again. Mm. The worst you would do is, oh, guy, might be no, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Our woman, uh, we thought that uh, uh, three bags of cement would be enough. Absolutely. Would have made it five. So, and, you know, people go to hospital, they die, and doctor will pack them up. Absolutely. So, the Nigeria has all that, and you know, it's one of the things we are saying that there must be a post-mortem to know why someone died on your hospital table. Mm -hmm. And then if the medical team is found culpable, that they should be charged to court. It's the same thing that should be applicable to all professions. But in Nigeria, it's not. So, mm -hmm. that's the unfortunate part of it. So, guys, you've heard, for all your prints, print needs, print um, whatever it is, um, print house Nigeria, right? They are, you had the CEO speak, you, you can't engage them and um, have worries or have um, um, issues, right? They are the ones I use for my print jobs and all that. And so you let him speak. If you do business with them, there's a guarantee that you would get quality result, right? So if you're in Lagos, outside Lagos, um, outside Nigeria, or wherever you are, right? I, I, I personally endorse Print House Nigeria, right? So um, um, for those who, who, who would watch this on YouTube and all that, I'm saying this because I know it's going to go um, on YouTube and is to say that if you're looking for a print company that would undo your print jobs, your print needs, um, 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 print house is um, a reliable print print company. And I know that there are other printers on this on this call, right? And I'm and I'm and I'm certain that from the knowledge you've got and the insights you've got, you will be able to give your clients quality. You'll be able to give your clients that guarantee. 
your clients will see you as reliable printers or reliable print companies, right? So um, that's for that. Then be before we end, um, is to say that I want to address a few things regarding designers. Someone asked a question where he said, um, I design using Illustrator, Photoshop, but the printer is telling me uh, I should send it in Corel Draw. Few days ago, a, a week there about ago, right? I was engaged by a friend who is based in the US to design um, something for um, 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 what do you call it? T-shirt, right? And they, they wanted to go into into production. First of all, I knew that this client is not in Nigeria. Before I commenced the project, I knew that I shouldn't use Corel Draw because in the US they hardly use Corel Draw. I think what they use most of the time is Adobe Illustrator and all the Adobe um, 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 suits. I designed Illustrator, did everything, sent it to her, and all that. I sent a file that the printer can use, but she didn't know. She asked me for the PNG file. I felt she wanted to use it for her Instagram DP or her WhatsApp, whatever. Then she come back maybe a few days after and said, eh, please, the printer is asking in the US, the printer is asking for, is asking for um, an EPS file. Uh, but I sent you a file that the printer can use, right? And she was like, oh, really? I said, yes. She was like, fine, thank you very much. A few days after, she said, please, uh, can you please help me send that um, file that in Corridor? I was like, I'm surprised that you're asking for Corridor. You are based in the U.S. I, I did accept that a printer in the U.S. would ask for it. Then she said, no, it's a printer in Nigeria that is asking for the Corridor. Corel draw version. I was like, oh, okay. If it's Nigeria, I understand. They always want Corel draw, and it's the kind of printer that is, or the kind of printer that they are, that would demand for Corel draw. Printers will not ask for. If you send them Illustrator file, they will work with it. If you send them PSD file, they will work with it. As long as your file is good, whatever format, they will work with it. And this is what I'm saying, or this is what I'm going to. You have new designers or young designers who come into the scene, and the year people will just tell them, learn Photoshop. And so from day one till they grow in the, in the industry, their life is based on Photoshop. For logo is Photoshop. For flyer is Photoshop. For book design, one of their pages is, is Photoshop. For whatever they do is Photoshop. And they do not know that it is limiting. People don't understand, and this is where the problem is. Designers do not understand the reason why these softwares were created, right? They don't understand that there is a software that is vector based for any job that has to do with vector designs. They do not understand that there are softwares that are meant for photo manipulations and pixel based softwares, wherein all that that software is meant for is so for photos, images, and all that. Right? But because this software has tools or features that you can type text, you can draw shape, you can do this. So they just feel, I can design in Photoshop. So everything they do is Photoshop. Yes. And they don't, everything Photoshop. Yes. And they don't know that that is limiting. This is why I tell people, as much as you can, learn more than one design software. Learn Corel Draw, learn Illustrator, learn Photoshop. And at least learn in design. At least for a graphic designer, learn those four softwares. Fine. Um, animation, if you are a motion designer, or you can go into After Effects and all the likes, right? But for a graphic designer, Corel Draw, Illustrator, Photoshop, and in design. So when this friend of when this client sent to me and said they needed the file in Corel Draw, all I did was just go and open. Corel Draw, import the yeah. Illustrator file in Corel Draw, saved it, downsized, down, downsized it, or stepped it down the version and sent it to the to the client, and they were able to print. The question is, if I did not know how to use Corel Draw, I will be stuck, oh. right? If I did not know how to use uh, Illustrator, and the client is asking me for Illustrator file, and I've done it in Corel Draw, I will be stuck, right? So as much as possible. Do not stick to just one design tool or one design software, right? 
ensure that you learn one or more so that in the event that a client or a printer is asking for this, you are able to handle it. Or you, are, you want to handle a project that requires this, you're able to do that. Two is that I mostly use design software based on efficiency. Before I design a project or design any start any design project, I just think which software would make me achieve what I want to achieve faster and quicker. If I know that it's color draw, forget what people are saying. And no, if you are still using color draw, color draw is not industry standard or industrial. Is, see, all those people that say that they don't know what they are saying. There's nothing like industry standard. As long as the tool can achieve what it is meant to achieve, it is a standard tool. Mr. I love will see talk about Canva, which I because people are saying no Canva. You can if you know use Canva. If you're a professional designer, you can see you can use Canva to design anything, right? And so don't feel that uh, because uh, if you are using Canva, you are not seen as a professional. No, as long as you achieve results, you as much as possible should learn how to use one or more, or three or four of the. To, so I'm just saying it to the printers in the in the in the call as much as possible. Don't just limit yourself to color draw. Try and learn Illustrator. Try and learn Photoshop. So that when you receive files in those formats, they don't pose problems to you. Designers are well, don't just learn Photoshop. Learn Corel Draw. Learn Illustrator. Learn InDesign. If I want to use for my editorials, is in design. I don't use Corel Draw. The seamlessness of InDesign is just it, as it's just it for me, right? So it's as it's as simple and like I said, efficiency and effectiveness. If I would design a magazine, two hundred page magazine, that would take me one week using InDesign, it probably would take me two weeks using CorelDRAW because it doesn't make me efficient using CorelDRAW. But with InDesign. I can flow text, move pages, and the text will still flow. But corridor, you still have to be doing the, the manual moving. If 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 a text goes to another page, by the time you move it, something happens. Right? So I just thought to thought to to touch on that. Someone says sometimes I get tired when people say industry standard. Yeah, well, you yeah, stop again. There's no standard. So let me start when they talk about Canva, right? Okay. And how okay. Okay, so um, and guys, uh, like um, and my brother has just said, um, when it comes to the issue of um, software, you use what works per time. So someone asks you to design and uh, they want to print line on back, and then you are going to Photoshop. <laughs> you see, line on back most times will most likely be screen printed, either one color or two color max. Okay? And like I'm telling you, you now go and design in Photoshop. So, okay, how they want print out the uh, positive that they want they want to use to do a uh, mesh. You understand? Because that, that thing is most black. Usually, that's the most get every single color. Even if you're printing in um, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, they still need to separate those things, which most often they would not do. Most nylon bags, for example, are probably one color or two colors. I'm just using that as an example. So it is what works for you per time. Today, Canva is working. There are various softwares and applications online that are working today. So I'm going to just quickly take you through Canva. Um, for those of you, unfortunately, I don't know why my, I have a problem with my screen. But for those of you that are there right now on Canva, you can. Uh, I'm just. Um, I think you can use your screen. I can no. use my screen. For just the audio, please, guys. A second, please. Okay. Where's the Canva? Oh. Let me log into Okay. So, if you have any questions, guys, please ask your questions, and um, I would be able to take them. Um, we have just at least 15 minutes and we would be done, right? Um, I'm sure you, you, you learned, this is one thing I appreciate about people who join these webinars, right? If I tell you that 
over 200 people received my mails, my reminders, and all that, right? And yet, they are nowhere to be found, right? So it's not, it's wanting to have that intent, to want to learn something. It's another thing to... Sorry, please. Okay, so um, I wanted him to show us on the screen, but scrolling through. So those of you, you have clients who, who, who design in Canva, and you are a printer in this house, in this room. You have clients who design with, um, uh, what do you call it, Canva, and you, okay, are you? Yeah, I think I can go there. Okay, please give me a second. Okay. So Let me just, um, my... Then you just look at the screen like this. I guess this is my screen. No, I think the Google okay, Google it. Okay, this is it. Of the presenter. Fantastic. A window. A window. Okay. Okay. Please. Okay, this is my screen. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay, fantastic. So it's okay. So, okay, fantastic. So, is, is anybody seeing this now? So, guys, can you, can you, can you see this now? my camera screen now. Let's Volume see. this screen. Let's see. It's presenting at the moment. Can you see the screen? Please, chat. Let's see. Because Let me see in the comment section if you can see the screen, please. Okay, people are saying no. No, they can't see it. They can't see my screen. Wait, go back to the Google Meet. Okay. Please, let's see. Can you see the screen now? Can you see the screen now? Even myself, I can't see, you can't see it. it. I don't know what the problem has been on as well. Uh, no, it, it shows that you are presenting, but... It shows that I'm presenting, but the screen is not coming up. The screen is not coming up. Oh, maybe. Can this be the problem? Okay, let's try that. Let's try it. Try and present again. Okay. Anyway, for those of you, let me, let me just quickly take this. Um, I think it's a it's a struggle. I don't know what the problem is right here. So if on your phone, on your mobile phone, if you open up your Canva application. You would see to the on your right hand side too, you see that um, um, greenish bluish green um 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 uh, a button that shows up the arrow there's, there's, a, there's a there's a bucket um we call it a bucket and then you see the arrow goes up now if you click on that you will see several options and you see the question mark how would you like to publish is anybody seeing that? Please, if you can see, if you can hear me and you can see what I'm saying, you can follow through. Please, can you say yes? So, open your Canva. Have you opened your Canva? Log into your Canva now. Log into your Canva. If you have logged into your Canva, say hi. yes, 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 let's get yeses. Log in into your Canva right now, please. Log into your Canva. Okay, so uh, can we have. Is it that people don't use Canva here? Some people who actually don't use Canva. Oh, the field is not professional. Well, maybe. <laughs> Someone said they have Canva open. Okay, so can we get one more or two people open up their Canva? One or two more people open your Canva. Now go to open any of your designs, any of your saved designs. Just open any of them. Any of the designs you have ever edited, maybe a template you have edited, you have worked with before on Canva. Open it up now. It looks like people are not using Canva. Design community, you're against Canva. <laughs> Some are against too. Hey. Okay, so now to your extreme right, you will see that bucket and arrow going up, signifying up. Can you see that? Is it possible to, possible to share screenshots here? Um, no, but I'm trying to sign it to my Canva. Okay. Um, let me see. Can you see that? Now, click it. Click on it. Click on it. 
Okay, some people are just trying to download Canva. Some people have opened Canva. Now, when you open, when you click on that arrow button going up, you will see options. How would you like to publish? Is that correct? Then most likely it will say it will suggest save as. It will do save as image, save with transparency, Facebook Messenger, Facebook page, Facebook option, Facebook story, uh, Google Drive, Gmail, Google Photo, Telegram, Twitter, LinkedIn. You know, Slack, Pinterest, Instagram posts, there are so many options. Now, if you have designed something or your client has designed something in Canva and you are going to print that document, and what you need to do is click on Save As. Now, it will give you option, file type. When you click on file type, you will see PNG, high quality image. You will see JPEG. JPEG will say small file image. Then you will see PDF standard. Small file size multi-page document. And you will see high quality multi-page documents. Fantastic. So You're presenting now. Okay, so, so great. So we can use this now. Now look at it. I'm clicking now. Hello. Hello. Okay. So you can follow a uh, fantastic. Now look at save as. So click on that. How would you like to publish? I'm sure everybody is seeing the screen now. Save as, that's the suggested. So click on it. Now you will see save as file type, PNG suggested. That's the suggestion. I don't need PNG. I'm a print person. Um, for the what I want to do, I need PDF high quality. So you click on the suggested. Now, you will see all the drop-downs. PNG, high-quality image, JPEG, small file size image, PDF standard, small file size, multi-page document, PDF print, high-quality multi-page document. That is what I need as a print person. So I'm going to click on PDF print. Now, it will now ask me, do I want it with marks and bleeds, crop marks and bleeds? If I want with crop marks and bleeds, I'll click, highlight it, if I don't want, I will unhighlight it. Whatever it is, I will click download. Can you see? So my file has been downloaded. And then I can save it. Either I want to sell by Gmail, either I want to send it via WhatsApp or whatever other platform I want to use to do it. So that's it. It's very simple. I want us to walk through it again. Let's go back. Let's go back again. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. Back. Okay, so on page. Now we are back to the home page. So let me open just any of your designs. Any of your designs. Don't use it. Uh, no, Don't it's use okay. It. Just an Instagram post. No, no, let's use the one we used before. Okay, fantastic. This is okay. Okay, so um, edit. I'm actually not going to edit anything there. I'm done. I just want to use the lemon squeeze directly as it is. So I'm done. So now I want to download um, your your clients, the owner of Fresh Lemon Squeeze, um, Fresh and Organic, has ordered for um, f uh, no, not flyer stickers. She, you understand? She, uh, yeah, she has ordered for stickers. Okay, so here is a sticker design looking beautiful and you don't want one printer to tell you story all you need to do click on this up button save as click on save as then pick your file type to be honest with you we can print with png okay we can print with jpeg we can print with pdf standard but usually for the best quality of if, because sometimes you may also want to adjust that particular um, 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 stuff. So just click on PDF print. It's going to give you vector file. Do you understand what I'm saying? By the time you download and you import it into whether it is um, 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 Illustrator or Corel Draw, you're going to have vector file for the, the for the for the background of oranges and flower. It will be it will be in the uh, PNG I mean, JPEG format, a bitmap format, 
whatever bitmap, whether it is PNG or JPEG. But for the lemon squeeze and all other elements on it, they will be in vector format. So all you just need to do is just to click on whether you want it to crop or you don't want it to crop, and then you download your draft. That's all. So that's basically all you need to do. Now, for some people, I don't know why, till now, Canva is not charging me money to download PDF. But I think that for some people, Canva would ask you to pay to download your, your files. I think it's a, it's a token. It's just a token. It's just a token. Okay? It's just a token. Canva may charge some of you a token to download your, your files. So that's basically how to do downloading high resolution and high quality pdf files from canva for now i don't know why canva is not charging me a cover each time i try to download but for some people they will charge a token so oh, that's really? it that's how it works okay yeah so sometimes your clients would argue with you i don't want to pay you manage whatever it is that they they give you you try mm. as much as possible to work with it mm. so that's it so that's it. Um, in a couple of seconds, minutes, will be done. So for those who use Canva, for those who say you have clients who say they design, now these days, the, um, clients say they can design themselves. They have Canva app on their phone. They design, they design in quotes that they think they can design and they want to print, right? So you can tell them to send you, go through these steps, save as PDF um, for print, um, as much as possible, whether I want them to include crop or bleed marks and all that, which I think might be important, um, depending on depending on the on the yeah. type of print that they want to do, right? So that's it. No tool is useless, right? No tool is useless. Um, someone saying, if I can guess, uh, if we design in InDesign. Yeah. Can we convert to PDF and export to CorelDRAW? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But the question is, you want to go to, you want to go to Abel <laughs> Kuta. No, you now go to Abuja first. <laughs> then you now from Abuja enter Ghana. <laughs> then from Ghana, you now spend like two days there. Then now take a trip back to Ethiopia. Then from Ethiopia, you now take a flight back to Nigeria again. Then take road and um, bus by road. Go to Enugu, then from Enugu now take a bus to Abel Kuta. Why? Of what purpose? There's a design group I'm on. Um, um, if you're beyond design, and I've had people ask questions where they say, uh, please, I designed a underpaid magazine in, in, in Photoshop. <laughs> please, I, I can't find where I can PDF. <laughs> <laughs> and you say what people usually say is that ah, you have to save each uh, whatever in singular in single pages. single pages oh. then now go back to corridor and start rearranging or pdf or uh, export out to pdf, export as PDF. Now go and join. they're going to join it in in <laughs> in corridor because one say why that's because that person all his life is only psd photoshop but when you can just design in InDesign, export to PDF and send to the print to the printer, it's like the printer that knows work. So printers, even if you send PDF, they'll still tell you to send color draw. <laughs> so I know that's the question um, read one is asking. Whether you can design, of course, once you design in InDesign, you can export to PDF. In fact, that's what most of the time you will do, especially for, for, for print, right? All the options and all that are there for bleed for whatever you want to put there is there it's only if the printer doesn't know how to use um what they call in design or cannot work with the pdf file then we'll be asking you to 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 export to color draw or save as color draw right so i think that answers the question guys it's been a long session uh, for the most part, we most times we want to go past one hour, but with the way things, um, the turn of events, we find ourselves spending more time than we planned. I want to say thank you to everyone who joined this session. Um, I do not take it for granted. Like I said initially, um, over 200 people received mails from designers' discourse. Um, over 50 people, 60 people 
registered specifically for the designing for print webinar. But I don't think we went past, I don't think we got up to 25 people, right, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the room. But I'm not a, a multitude person. I'm not a quantity person. I'm, I'm not one who is moved by numbers, right? If just two or three people can get value from this session, three, five, 10, 15 people can get value from this session, I'm most satisfied and fulfilled, right? Not every, like the, the, the Bible will say, um, many are called, but few are chosen, right? You guys are the, one, are the ones who, and I saw one person here, let me just give him a shout out. His name is, um, I don't know if he's still here. His name is, I think I told him to switch off his camera. Abdul Adebayo Razak, if I'm not mistaken. Why I told him to do that is because this guy was on was on a motorbike, was on a motorcycle. I'm sure the rider was in front and he was at the back, but he did not want to miss this session. So while in transit, he had connected using the link and was in transit listening to the session. I'm sure it was when he got home or got to a safe place Adibayo that Mubarak. yeah, Adibayo Mubarak that he now, I saw that he was in a room and he was settled, right, until he had to turn off his feet. It shows that he wanted to learn and get value from this session. So for those of you who have joined, I want to say thank you very much for sacrificing your time, um, your data, and all that to join this session. I do not take this for granted. For as many of you who are on this call, if you've not um, followed us on any of our social media platforms, please, I would appreciate that you do that. It is designer's discourse, just designer's discourse on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and on Twitter. And for those of you who have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, just go on YouTube, search for designer's discourse, and just click on the subscribe button. I think we have about 66 people who have subscribed. I want us to reach to each 100. So if you know anybody who, who, who would benefit from this session, Besides those who missed this session, you can just tell them to go to the YouTube page. By tomorrow, this video will be on our YouTube channel, right? So I want to say thank you very much. First of all, thank you to Mr. Um, Olumide Ainla for sparing time out of your busy schedule to do this with us. And I know that you try as much as possible to touch on the basic and most important things i'm sure if there was time we would have delved into other things but for want of time we couldn't do this i mean we will consider maybe a second edition but maybe that one will now be probably maybe the business of design and probably a physical means right so it will be limited to just few people right it should not be something that will be will be large so limited to few people that's why if you're in lagos we probably might have a physical um, session where it will bring you to the office, you will see the machines, you will see um, the process on how print um, is done. Once again, thank you very much. Um, next month, we would also have another session. Um, most of you have suggested who you want us to bring, but the next session will definitely be a lady. I've tried to alternate between a male and a female speaker, right? So there's, um, <laughs> these days, people are talking about gender, gender balance. So when we have a, a, a male speaker this month, we have a female speaker the next month, the following month we have um, another um, speaker who is of the opposite gender. And probably maybe um, in December thereabout, we probably might have a physical meet. Um, we'll see how that goes um, for everyone. For those of us who, are just, who, who just joined, apologies or sorry, we're about ending. Um, the video will be on our YouTube channel um later today or tomorrow so you can catch up with um whatever you missed um by watching the replay on youtube so thank you very much guys thank you very much guys i appreciate you all um for so someone's saying are you taking interns interns for what for printing or for design when are we meeting live? so when are we meeting live so we are going to that will be communicated um in due course um when we'll be meeting for internship 
for design, this is designer's discourse, and this is not Wonder Brand or <laughs> <laughs> so. For designer's discourse, there's no room for internships, um, but for Wonder Brand, um, subsequently, um, we would consider um, having that. Um, so just follow designer's discourse on social media, follow me, um, if you follow with you, follow Wonder Brand. Um, on Instagram or whatever social media platform that you are convenient with, and um, you will be abreast of whatever it is that needs to be communicated. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good evening and enjoy yourself. Take care and bye. <laughs>